Hi, this is Andy and Sharon McClellan from Father's House. Welcome to this teaching session. We pray that you will be blessed and grow as a result of listening today. Yeah, and if you've got your phones with you this morning, we're already live on here, so uh, share it with your friends. It's good to get more people on here this morning to hear the word of the Lord and to hear about the fear of the Lord, which Victor is going to be speaking on this morning. So take it, share it, click like, write your comments on it, and we'll see them as we roll through this morning. So Father, we just bless Victor today. As we hand over to Victor, we just say, Lord, come with your glory, come fall in the midst of us. For those that are watching and listening this morning, Father, that that need a touch from you, Lord, we just say, Holy Spirit, go and touch them right now, even as we're speaking, Lord, just begin that process of letting your folk know that you're there, that you're alive, that you're well, and that you're for them and not against them, for them and not against them. So we bless this morning in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let your peace fall. Let the Holy Spirit just come and invigorate, revive, and renew and refresh in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 God is an amazing God. He's a God who provides more than enough. So praise God. This morning, God spoke to me. Uh, to first of all, Peter, God spoke to me about you, uh, and He says uh, you're trying to juggle too many things and and trying to hold on to too many things. And I just heard a a trumpet sound calling, "Stop! Stop what you're doing, Peter! Stop what you're trying to achieve! Stop what you're trying to work at! God wants you to stop and rest." Rest not in your abilities, but rest in his ability. Rest in what he is he has said to you because he wants to give you strength and he wants to give you long life. And what you what God wants to do is for you to rest. And that's going to be hard for you because you love to be busy. You love to do things and be active and have your mind active and do things like that there. But God says he wants you to stop. And I, I don't, I, I have a loud voice. And this is what I hear. And God says, stop what you're doing, Peter. And no, and I, I, I just shared with Andy, no, no, God wants Peter to stop. And, and, it's he wants you to stop what you're doing and rest in him okay love you man i really love you so much bless you today the fear of the lord as uh, so often we read about the fear of the lord and what that means or or we take it the wrong way and uh, we just find it that it's uh we get the wrong end of the stick fear to us it's an unpleasant emotion it is caused by a fear of threat of danger the threat of pain and the threat of harm fear weakens our immune system it has the potential to cause heart disease or heart damage intestinal problems such as ulcers and irritable bowel syndrome fear can cause decreased fertility it can lead us to have a, an age of a younger age rather than an older age. It can even cause premature death. Fear, uh, one of the quotes I was looking up, fear is the dark path, is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate and hate leads to suffering. Fear is so debilitating. It's overpowering. It's overpowering claws, reaches into every fiber of our lives, body, soul, mind, and, and heart. It's claws, it's, it limits us, it controls us, it hinders us from effectively moving forward in life. It, it's, it's, we, we are so, it's like being traumatized by fear, gripped by fear, encircled by fear. Matthew chapter 25, verse 24 to 26 says 
he also who received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you, you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what here you have what is yours. But his master answered, you wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. The Greek word meaning for the word hid is crypto, to hide, to conceal, to lay up in secret, things hidden. This servant was gripped by fear. He was, he buried his talent into the ground. Just like so many of us today, we have been given talents by and gifts by Abba Father. And because of the fear that we're walking in and through, we choose to dig a hole to bury our gifts. Maybe we've been too rash, impulsive, too impatient to do things when what we should be doing is taking time out to wait on the Lord for his answer and for his response. We live in such an instant society. We go and we have instant coffee. We, have, we can get instant credit. We can get instant food. We can get instant this and instant that. Everything has become a commodity that can be picked up, laid down, and thrown away after use. With fear, there is always that nagging thought or that feeling that something is going to happen or take place. I had a heart attack uh, a year or so ago, and I experienced grips of fear that I wouldn't make it for my next birthday or see my dreams and visions fulfilled in my life. Do you know what I can say today? That is an utter lie from the mouth of our enemy, from the mouth of my enemy. It's an utter lie. John 10.10 10 says, the thief comes to rob, steal, and to destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the in the full. The enemy comes to rob your life of the fullness that we have been given in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that our victory is in him and in him alone, not ourselves, not our abilities, not our strengths or anything we got. Our enemy comes to steal your peace, your joy, your strength, your rest in who you are as a son and his daughter. The enemy comes to destroy everything that we are involved with or associated with in the kingdom, in God's kingdom, and tries to discredit Christians as being strong, conquering children of the king of kings. That's exactly what Satan does. He is out to do. He's out to extinguish us. His onslaught his, of aggression against us as children of the Lord is never ending. He doesn't go on holiday. He doesn't take five minutes rest. His purpose is to cause us to be so gripped by fear that we cannot move or think or breathe that we are controlled by our fears, by our worries, by our cares and by our anxieties, that we have less control and less influence over the things in our lives that, that which surrounds us. There's some quotes that uh, some men and women have made over the years. Fear uh, is faithlessness. A good life is a good fence against fear. Where fear is, happiness is not. Fear is of the flesh and panic is of the devil, A.W. Tozer. Fear brings terror. It causes fright and fearlessness or fearfulness. It causes you to be full of horror, alarm, panic, and brings a great deal of agitation. There are three types of fear. Rational fear, 
it occurs when there's a real sense or an Im imminent threat. Primal fear is defined as an innate fear that is programmed into our brains. And irrational fear are the ones that don't make any logical sense and can vary from person to person. Doctors and psychiatrists tell us that our brains are hardwired for fear. It helps us to identify and avoid threats to our safety. Yet, we have allowed our past and what has happened there to affect and influence us in the way we live our lives today. Our thinking, our understanding, our mindsets, our intellect, our views, our baggage affects us in so many ways. Fear. If Jesus is not our Lord and Savior, and does it, if Jesus is not our Lord and Savior, it does not affect us in so many weird and different ways of our lives. 1 John 4 verse 18 says this, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect. I looked up that word fear, uh, and in the Greek, uh, the word for fear is phobia. And that's where we get the word phobia. It means to put to flight by terrifying or to scare away. And I look up uh, several uh, phobias uh, and what they mean. Uh, here are just a few. Uh, you might have a phobia called galophobia, which is a fear of sharks. And every time the, the soundtrack of Jaws come on, da -na, da -na. no, the people are gripped by the fear. Uh, there's plutophobia, which is the fear of money. There's a rhythmophobia, which is fear of numbers. There's a telephobia, which is a fear of imperfection. There's a coolerophobia, which is a fear of clowns. There's hydrophobia, which is a fear of water. There's pogonophobia, which is a fear of beards. There's filiophobia, which is a fear of love. And I wonder, does anybody know what nomophobia means? Oh, yes, Sharon, because I told you. Uh, fear of being without your mobile phone in this day and age. <laughs> People walk around, it's almost as if their phones are stuck or glued to their hands or it's in their pockets and you start to panic and you go, oh, where's my phone, where's my phone, where's my phone? And, and you go, go all over the place looking for your phone. <coughs> so often we walk around with fear in our lives. To say that we're not totally aware of, of the outwork and outward and visible workings is a slight understatement or it's an underestimation of what we have abdicated of the realizing how much we are affected by the baggage we call fear. Fear of the dark, fear of the, the heights, fear of dying, fear of gray hairs, fear of spiders, fear of the unknown, fear of colors, fear of anything and everything that's out there. Fear can be crippling and debilitating. It can be controlling if we allow it. It's that's a big massive word if we allow it. It cause it causes you to become a its servant, a slave. It can it can't do this. It can it can't do this because of fear, or I can't do this, or I can't go here because of fear, or what might happen. Fear is extremely good at making problems, situations, and circumstances explode out of all proportion. We've heard the story about the nurse, or the story about the princess and the, the pea uh, making a mountain out of a molehill. But fear makes uh, us look at things so intently and causes our focus and purpose, our focus and vision to look on things. Uh, 
and disregard everything else. There's no saying which says you reap what you sow. If you sow carrots, you're not going to expect peas. You you expect carrots. If you sow an apple, apples, you don't expect to harvest bananas. You harvest apples. The same is true for our lives and thoughts and your emotions. If we are allowing fear to have access into our lives, no matter how large or how small the fear might be, we will reap fear and all of its associated friends and relations. Fear limits you. Fear sets boundaries all the way around you. Fear incapacitates you. There is no escaping this unhealthy fear that we have allowed ourselves to live or we have grown up with or, uh, or that something has taken place in our lives that has caused hurt or abuse or rejection. An unhealthy fear can or may come inside as a, in us as a guise to protecting us. Second Timothy chapter one, verse seven says, for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardness or fear, but he has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm and well-balanced mind and self-controlled. That's the amplified version. Now, I remember reading that there, going through problems in my early Christian walk, and I was singing it, I was shouting it, I was declaring it. God, you've not given me the spirit of fear, but love, joy, and a sound mind. I declared that day in and day out. You know, and that's you no know, God wants us to walk uh, in victory, to walk without fear of what can happen around us. Fear is not from God to keep us humble, to keep us under control, to limit us, to, or to make our lives horrible, or to make us grovel. Unhealthy fear is not from God. Let me say it again. Unhealthy fear is not from God. Fear that is unhealthy comes from our enemy, Satan, the devil, Lucifer, care what you, what you ever want to name him. In whatever shape, form, and fashion you want to dress it up as, we have allowed him to access or into our lives. Fear comes to rob, steal, and destroy, as we've said before, and repress the life of God that is within us within you and within me. I know who I am. I, I know who I serve. Yet, even as I was pondering this and writing this down, uh, my thoughts were taken back to the time as even as a Christian, I was gripped with fear, worry, anxiety, stress, loss of hope and depression. What people would say, what people would think, I've messed up, I've screwed up, I failed. The uncertainty was so great and much more besides. Yet to Philippians chapter 2 verses 7 through to 10 says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things of heaven and things on the earth and things under the earth. So the unhealthy fear that I was partnering with was allowing that and that I was allowing to come alongside as alongside me, I felt I had no other option, no choices to make regarding this fear. I allowed it to scare me, to frighten me, to put me in the dark. It made it was all, made, it was made all the worse by what happened to me as a child. And then as I grew up, through the abuse and the words of my parents, the, my teachers, my classmates, my workmates, I could go on and on. So that fear became ingrained into me that at who I was. I struggled with this fear through my early years as I was growing up. I tried unsuccessfully to suppress it, to push it to one side, to forget about it. Yet the fear surfaced time and time again 
uh, came to a head while I was in hospital. Up to that point, I had really put it onto the carpet and I never dealt with it. I was terrified of it. This fear stank. It was toxic. It was paralyzing. It was unforgiving. It was, un it was controlling. It was unrelenting. It was frightening. It was real. Each time I would try and escape, each time I was pulled back by its grip, deeper and further down into a deep, dark abyss. At this stage in my life, all that I looked for was to be free of its dictatorship. And I didn't know how it was going to happen or take place. Yet I knew that there, there had been a better way to walk each day of my life. Thus I embarked on a journey with God and with the help of the Holy Spirit, asking him for help, taking small, some, sometimes minute steps as he spoke to me, leading me, guiding me through some tricky, hairy uh, minefields of life. I remember dealing with deep inner fears that no one else knew about. I didn't talk to them about. Did I care anymore? No. I wanted Jesus to set me free at any cost. I found out what the cost was all about. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 through to 26 declares, If anyone would come after me, let him deny one, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me three, three times. Deny yourself, take up the cross and follow me is one way to find freedom. Following Christ. Every time a particular fear popped its ugly head up, Holy Spirit taught me, instructed me, guided me to bring them all to the cross, no matter how big it was or how small it was, to the cross of Jesus Christ and repent of that particular fear, ask for forgiveness, then ask Holy Spirit to come into that void that was left and fill every area with Father, Abba Father's love and his goodness. There were times, even days, that were filled with dealing with these fears. Yet the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was faithful and true. He was a comforter. He was a strength. He was my advocate. And his unending love for me, his joy, his mercy flowed copiously over my life. And through it, washing away the fear that I had been gripped with and overshadowed. I look back now and I know with, that without help, I could never be where I am today. Knowing who I am, knowing who I serve. I serve an amazing, awe-inspiring Father who loves me just for being me. For no other reason, I'm not worried or fearful or rejected, but loved. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 7 reads this. As believers, you know his great worth indeed. His preciousness is imparted to you. And I, I was stuck in that word preciousness. I looked it up. Pardon me. The word preciousness speaks of according honor, perceived value, worth, price. And in the Greek, it means time. It means to be punished. I, I, I was puzzled because it was, it was almost opposites. And, it's, and I looked at it and the Holy Spirit just spoke to me and it says the preciousness or his punishment for our lives was imparted to us. We receive forgiveness as it was imparted to us. Jesus took all of our fears and they were imparted to him and he nailed them to the cross and left them there. And I thought, wow, we are his preciousness. Jesus took our all our problems, all our worries, all our sins, all our fears, and nail them to the cross. And we are in Christ, and Christ is in us. 
Do you know what that you are his preciousness? Do you understand what that means for you as a child, as his child? His focus is intently and intentionally to you. He loves you. He makes time for you to be in his presence. He wants to have face time with you. Job 9, 20, 28 says, I became, become afraid of all my sufferings, for I know you will not hold me innocent. And as I looked the word for afraid up, in the Hebrew, it means yagar. Uh, it means to fear, to be afraid, to fear. The roots behind this word is in the idea of piling of rocks. In ancient times, this word was used for stoning a person. Stoning was such a popular means of execution in those days. It naturally took place, took, it naturally took on the, the meaning of fear for one's safety. That would explain why the use of the word in Job 9.28 for Job realizes that his sufferings will not remove his sins or fears if he is suffering because of sin and fear. His, his sufferings will only increase and get heavier and heavier as more and more rocks are heaped up upon each other. In the wilderness, you may be fearful when you come across heaps of stone. This is in the ancient, ancient biblical times, People in the wilderness would have walked and known in the wilderness or the desert places. If there was piles of stones around, they would have known there was that either someone was executed or there would have been a, an altar. So this is like your fear. You're, you've become more focused on the fear rather than focusing on the Lord. So much so that the fear becomes an idol that you worship. The word yagar, fear, is spelt yod, gimel, resh. Yod is the only letter that is suspended in the air. The danger of the yod in yagar is that it will be so focused on your pain and sorrow, looking at the, the suspended yod that we will not see the rocks below us and then stumble over the rocks that are heaped up upon the ground. The three letters of Yagar in all represent a message. From heaven, Yod, a message from friends, Gimel, and a message from the Spirit of God, Resh. Psalm 103, verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions, rebellion, transgress, revolt, to break away from authority from us. Know that when God puts your stuff, that is the fear that you've been carrying and holding on to, into the sea of his forgetfulness, the Lord cannot remember what has happened to you or what has happened to it. So don't try go fishing it up again or digging it up. It's dead. It's lost. It's no more. Realize what the Lord does and what, he's, what you have given to him to put in his, the sea of his forgetfulness. It has been gotten for by, by God already. But your enemy, on the other hand, mm, he wants you to cause you to try and dig it up, fish it out, clean it up, dress it up, and put it back on the plate through your fears. Why? So that Satan can torment you with them, beat you over the head, bring you into submission and bondage to those fears again. And again and again. Jesus paid for all these fears on the cross. Finito, period, stop. 1 John 
chapter 1 verse 9 says but if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness what does this action do this action of asking god to forgive us of the wrong thoughts wrong ideas wrong attitudes wrong understandings about the fear that we have had or the fear that we lived with or the fear that has been dealt with gets dealt with the blood of Jesus Christ, God's only beloved son. This confession of your fears and sins is the way to find reconciliation and restoration and have an unbroken relationship with God. This has cleansed everything that has that we thought about were wrong thinking that we were given or taught and has brought reconciliation into our hearts back to Abba Father, who loves us so much. All that I've spoken about before is unhealthy fear. This is man's fear. This is not to be this is not to be confused with the fear of the Lord. Man would say fear is false evidence appearing real. The fear of man brings lies. It controls it manipulates it disentangles it depresses it deludes it demeans it destroys the mind the thoughts the word the deeds the action throws up everything in the air and causes you to stumble in the dark when you're supposed to be walking in the light of the truth of god's word it says that the fear of the lord brings love life and liberty in and through the power and blessing of the Holy Spirit. Job 28 to 28 says, Behold the fear of the Lord, that is, that is wisdom. Wow. And in Proverbs 15, verse 30, 33, says the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. So we'll look, I look these words up again in the Hebrew. The, the word for instruction was yasar. It means to instruct, to bind, chasten, to, to chastise, to correct, to instruct, to punish, to reform, to reprove, to teach. And wisdom is kakam, meaning to be wise in mind, word, or action. Exceedingly teach wisdom, to exceedingly teach wisdom, to be wise, to make self wise, to make wiser. So the fear of the Lord causes us to be chastened. Oh boy. Whoever like who likes to be chastened by the Lord? Mm, I don't particularly like being chastened. But God loves whom the Lord loves, he chastens. And God wants us to walk in his love and in his grace. Some of us aren't going to like being chastened, to be corrected. Again, some think that whatever comes out of their mouths is the truth and they think they are right no matter what to be reformed and to be reproved you allow to allow our thinking and our mindsets to be shown a better way then we're shouting out at god god do you love us what's happening what's taking place it's because abba father loves us that he chastens us and reproves us to walk in his fear. Why? For our well-being and protection. Proverbs 1 verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And we know what the word knowledge is. It's the word yada. To know intimately like a husband. Intimately knows his wife, but it's so much more intimate than that. The word yod is to a hand above, a hand from above, a message of provision. Dalith, meaning doorway or opening, and ayin is an eye, fountain or spring. So the word yada, meaning to know intimately, could read like this. When you receive a message from God, he opens the door of your understanding, your thoughts, your reasoning to be to bring a font or a spring of wisdom out of your life 
to bring people's relationships closer to God. So when you walk in the fear of the Lord, this cultivates what you know to be right and know what know to be wrong. The difference between what is good and what is evil. When you have a free will choice to make regarding this with the knowledge that we have gained through walking humbly before the Lord. Proverbs 10 verse 27 says, the fear of the Lord prolongs life that one may avoid the snares of death. Again, the fear of the Lord causes you and I to be alert and to watch out for the traps and lures that life brings along our walk with the Lord. His fear in our lives helps us to keep us safe and protected as we journey through life. It brings insight and revelation that all would otherwise have us messed up totally. When we walk in the fear of the Lord, your walk is one of one that is humble, gentle, loving, and kind, which causes your body, soul, mind, and heart to function on a different level to that of the world standards. Yasaf means to add, to cease, to exceed, to increase, to prolong, and to yield. It means the word is yod, hand from above, hand from, from above, a message or provision. Samak is a shield, a protection, or a support. And the final pay is the containing a mouth containing seed. So you have a hand from above, a hand from above that brings a message or provision to you with a shield around and a support and a protection around you, causing the mouth to speak forth a seed that brings about life to you and to others. We, were, we all know the scripture in, Matthew, in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Wow. So let me get this right. To walk in the fear of the Lord adds to your life. You exceed man's limits and man's assumptions. You increase in every aspect of your life. And your life is prolonged as you continue to yield your life to the Lord. Whoa, that's living out of Psalm 91, verse 16. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my Yeshua or my salvation. This all happens when you and I walk in the fear of the Lord day and night. Walking in the fear of the Lord results in having Jesus Christ revealed in us in a real and personal way, showing us how to walk in his goodness all the days of our lives and to behold the rich mercies that the Lord showers upon us daily. The fear of the Lord is his treasure in Isaiah 33, verse 6. And that's the word has, hasar, to store up, to lay up in store, to make treasure. It's made up of three words again, Aleph, Sade, and Resh. Aleph is chief. Sade is to capture or to be captured. Resh means the head, thoughts, and mind. Our thoughts Mindset and head knowledge are to be captured by the chief of our lives, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, that we lay up treasures in heaven as we glorify the Lord through our open and yielded lives. We are the apple of his eye and, and his royal priesthood, holy and pure before him on the earth today. Proverbs 14 Verse 26 says, the fear of the Lord is a strong confidence. No matter what comes alongside of us or tries to destroy us, let our confidence be like a strong and awesome tower. That the righteousness can, that the righteous can run into it and be saved. We sing a song about that. The fear of the Lord is a strong and mighty tower. And we, we have actions. The righteous run in and, and are saved. Our confidence is in the Lord. As we walk in the fear of the Lord, we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of the Lord. 
the Lord exalts us in his timing. We are confident in the Lord, not in ourselves. It's not arrogance or being proud or stubborn or being pig-headed, but being open and yielded before the Lord, allowing the Lord to fill us with his strength and with his word being the foundation for life itself. Acts chapter, two, Acts chapter 9 verse 31 says, And walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit. The Greek word uh, for the fear of the Lord is, is phobias. To walk or to, put, to be put in fear, to alarm, to fright, to be frightened, to be afraid exceedingly fear or terror as we walk with the lord as did the disciples we are put into or walk out the fear of fear that is both godly and righteous and healthy we don't have or put anything before the lord these fears of ours could become idols that we worship Oh, I'm so fearful. Uh, I can't do this uh, or I can't do that. And they become our idols and we worship them much more than our creator himself. Without walking in the fear of the Lord, we are sitting ducks for the enemy to pick us off one piece at a time. It says in Proverbs 2, 15, the little foxes destroy the vine. Don't allow those little issues in our lives, those little fears in our lives to become our downfall. Keep short accounts with the Lord and give no opportunity for the enemy of your soul to set you up, to ambush you, to destroy your life. Why? Because not dealing with the little foxes, those lies, those fears, that deception, those bad choices, those wrong actions, those bad judgments to overwhelm you and snuff you out. That fear has gripped you and over, over, overwhelmed you so much. But walk in the fear of the Lord, walking with the Holy Spirit, being built up, being encouraged, being comforted, filled with the joy. Yes, joy unspeakable. Wisdom, strength, and mercy, and grace, recognizing what it means to walk humbly before God, before the Lord of glory, to walk in a right standing before him, and to show and keep sh showing forth his unending stream of love, grace, mercy, and peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. There's a prayer uh, that I'd like to I share with you uh, at the end here that um, I've gone through several times uh, in, in my walk with the Lord. Uh, and as I've been writing a, a book about layers of the heart, um, God's been showing me several things um, that I've put into practice and I keep putting into practice day in and day out. And these help me. Uh, there's a prayer that you may want to pray over and all I have a father to come and help you with those fears that you have held onto or experienced through your life. You may want to pray this through several times on your own. I know I, yeah, I, know I went through that period continually praying and asking the Lord to deal with and remove the fears, the big ones, the small ones, the, the insignificant ones, the in-between ones, and things like that. I just want to be able to share this with you. Um, so let me just, just bear with me. This is my first time being able to share. So, uh, yeah, and just share with this. Father, I come to you, giving up the rights over these fears that are in my life. In Jesus' name, 
may you lord jesus come into every area of lies that the enemy taunts me taunts me with with his fear that causes me to panic and become anxious abba father i bring this thought and lie to the foot of the cross and i choose to leave that fear there and give it to you now lord jesus i step back and wait for you to speak into my life your words of healing and wholeness i ask holy spirit you would come and speak words of life instead of the lies of fear and condemnation that i bow down for to for this length of time and i give this fear and whatever fear it is you give it over to god it's a fear of rejection or, or fear of anxiety or fear of depression now, name those fears and bring take them over to god i have gi given them over to you god i now wait in your presence for you holy spirit to come and speak to me your words of resurrection life take the time and sit in the presence of god for you to hear his voice speaking into your you into you whether it is a still small voice a portion of scripture a feeling in your gut or his words take time to deal with each and every fear that arises be still and write down each time that papa god says that you are and what he says about you and how abba god sees you and who you are in, in christ jesus you know how you felt before and what your feelings were so now take the time to ponder and meditate on abba father giving him praise and worship and being thankful for all he is and what he has done in in and through your life once you have dealt with all those fears that have arisen in your life ask god to come ask father god to come and close the door of this layer of fear and to seal it with his blood and just say abba father thank you for coming into my life and cleansing the thoughts and the emotions of fears i ask you that you would help me to stand upon your word i declare over my life your word that says that whom the sun sets free is free indeed the old is gone and today i am a new creation in christ jesus my lord and savior help me to make good choices and where fear arises help me lord to put them to death today no if you need help with the fear no give us a call text us messages that uh, you will be glorified and that god will be glorified and exalted in and through your lives and uh, i just pray that this will be a blessing to you this will be an encouragement to you and that not to walk in the fear of the lord any longer or not to walk in the fear of man any longer but to walk in in the fear of the lord and i believe that's what's coming into the church in these days that we walk in is the fear of the lord to walk in a, a fear uh, both in righteousness and holiness and uh, i just want to thank you for that and uh, i'll just pass it over to andy thank you victor what a great message personal personalized but uh, i'm glad you enjoyed it i hope you get a lot from that this morning and remember that it'll be up on uh facebook uh for the next few weeks but also the fact that it will be actually uh, uh 
uh, available on YouTube. So we'll have that processed and up on YouTube channel later on. If you haven't already uh, signed up to the YouTube channel, then uh, go on when you find the message, go on it and then tick the subscribe button at the bottom, uh, which means you'll get updated and you'll get to see other messages that are coming in. So uh, we love you all. And we just want to say in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, have a blessed, blessed week. May the peace of the Lord just shine and extend his hand around you, holding you, keeping you, and watching over your life. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>